Welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna get some hay. Uh, our, our pigs and our sheep all use hay, all eat hay. We don't have uh, any fields on our property, really. We've got a couple little meadows, but all the hay that we feed our animals, we purchase. It's January, we've ran low, so we're gonna be heading out and getting some hay today. Our, we feed typically Timothy, uh, we could feed broom, uh, but Timothy is what we've got access to. So there's a little farm on our mountain here uh, that sells bales of Timothy, which we're gonna go purchase. And uh, we got the dump trailer all loaded up. I got the sides on it. And we worked on that yesterday. I had a friend of mine come over and put some sides together for the dump trailer. And that's what we're gonna use to make our little hay run today. Looking like 40 bales. I got the trailer all cleaned out. There was some snow uh, and it from where I had sit and gone down the road and kind of drifted in the front. I got all the snow all cleaned out. I tell you, um, my back already hurts. My back is already feeling this. It's not even that much. I'm not a, not trying to be too big of a complainer, but I'm not tough. <laughs> Well, that was quick. We got uh, 40 bales and we're already heading home. So I didn't get a chance to uh, film anything, but <laughs> that was that was Jess's job. So we got the hay, it didn't go as, the filming of that didn't go as well as I thought it was going to. <laughs> we, prior to uh, us pulling in there, I talked to Mrs. G about filming uh, the load out of the hay and we got there and met the guy and uh, he ended up being super cool we were talking about uh, you know he he uh, just lives right up the road and he used to plow the driveway for the folks that lived at our place prior to us purchasing it so we got to talking and uh, it was all loaded 40 bales we paid him the money which Holy God, it's, uh, you know, it lasts a long time. Uh, we, we don't go through a ton of hay here. Um, about a bale, bale lasts us about two and a half days, three days, two and a half days, uh, 12 bucks a bale. Um, so it's not the bi biggest expense in the world, but it's still, you know, you're forking over a bunch of cash that, uh, we don't see immediate returns for because obviously we're, uh, you know, we're not farmers, we're hobbyists. Uh, we've got a sign out at the end of the driveway. We've got a, this place named and uh, I'll take you out there and show you it because I think it's just perfect, perfectly fits our our place and our lifestyle. But yeah, you know, it's a, it's a hobby, so. Needless to say, though, we uh, we finished that up and we got no footage from it. And then uh, Miss G needed to film something for her work for Instagram. And we hiked over the bluff and went down to the river. I'll probably try to stitch a couple of those little shots in here, but there's no audio. I tried to talk and explain where I was and what we were doing. And you just, sounds like I'm in a hurricane. It was a split of 30 knots of wind blowing sand and dust and 
but it's pretty. So I'll try to get a couple clips into that video so you can see it. And uh, I'm gonna take a little bit of time here, get this hay organized. Um, I don't have a hay barn. Um, at the end of the last end of last year, I cleared this area out with the backhoe uh, to put a little little four stall barn in there. Um, and then I uh, got called to work out of town and ended up doing some traveling and um, one thing led to another another one thing led to the next and it was the end of the year and I didn't have a barn so we're uh, we're going to uh, for the time being we're gonna leave it in the in the trailer and cover it and then eventually we're ordering a tractor right now going through the process with uh, Craig Taylor equipment here in Alaska to order a John Deere um, compact tractor and a big list of implements for it as well. So, um, I mean, I'm going to need this trailer before too long, but for the time being, I think we're just going to leave the hay in the trailer and try to cover it with a nice big tarp and leave it as long as we can. If need be, I can uh, stick it in the high tunnel that's over there. Um, so there's plenty of room for us to take care of this stuff and not let our small investment <laughs> um, go to waste. But all right, well, actually, uh, I'm gonna sh head down to that sign and I'll show you the the sign, property sign. We worked on it last fall and got, or last summer and got it in. Uh, my wife, Miss G, she's got a Instagram account. Wild Things Farmish. Um, so if you're interested, go. If you find yourself in one of these videos and you want to check out more photos of our of our place and what we're up to, Wild Thing at Wild Things Farmish um, is the uh, is the handle. So go check it out, and I'll uh, show you the sign. As promised, Wild Things Farmish. You can follow us on Instagram at Wild Things Farmish. And I think farmish is perfect because it is definitely a farm-ish. We are figuring this out as we go. So, um, I'll just swing by here real quick and take a little look at the the gals. We haven't talked much about the sheep, but we've got three Suffolk ewes here. Uh, one ewe and her two-year-old uh, female lambs so they're all uh, they're all going to be bred at some point so we're going to ex be expanding our flock I've got an appointment with a, a lady uh, that owns a farm up here uh, to go take a look at some of her sheep uh, that she might be selling so we're looking to expand our flock we definitely want to get into uh, and uh, breeding Suffolk and uh, uh, reaping the rewards of uh, having some meat, some lamb. Uh, we'll get, we'll end up doing a video on them at some point. Well, that didn't last long. The uh, hay is out of the trailer and put up in the shed. In my professional career, I do a quite a bit of project management. And in project management, you're always trying to identify constraints and maximize efficiency um, like Six Sigma and lean lean manufacturing well this is not lean it seems like everything I touch I end up touching twice which is the last thing you want to do you want to think through a process and think about the most efficient way that you can do something for most people the most I mean, yeah, it's easy to spend money quickly, but one of the most valuable things you have is time. So if you can, you know, identify efficient ways to use your time, you are so much farther ahead. And that's one of the hard lessons that I've learned keeping animals, you know, raising animals and being a hobby farmist is uh you know spend the money spend the time to build sufficient enclosures 
And I think the first, got it, like half dozen years that I did chickens every, the, towards the end of season every year, there's just at all. And if you've done it, you know what I'm talking about. Things just go downhill and things get away from you and things start to smell and chickens start to get fat and too fat and you don't end up having time and you put extra days or weeks into them, feeding them, uh, putting off processing and that sort of thing. And it just ends up biting you. And every year you tell yourself, oh, next year I'm going to do it differently. I've learned all these things that I'm going to incorporate into my future plans. Well, I kind of think I'm finally to that point in a lot of what I do. That's why I've spent the year focusing on enclosures and getting things set up inside that hay shed um, we do quail in the summer uh, we called them last fall because uh, it was around the time that i was going out of town so that didn't last they didn't last they paid that price but we're going to start doing that again this year and i'm thinking about doing setting up a four layer hatching time quail cage with the uh, egg trays and the feeders that um, save food, don't waste food, keep the quail from wasting their food. Well, this is uh, one of the improvements. We've kept rabbits uh, for a while now. Uh, so I'll kind of run you through what I'm working on here. So this is the rabbit cage currently under construction. Um, so I'm, as you know, if you're watching these videos, I'm in Alaska and we pay a ton in shipping. So we've been keeping rabbits and we've had the smaller cages and a lot of, um, little used setups, cages that we found on Craigslist and brought back and cobbled together and made work. And with the cold temperatures, the um, droppings start to get kind of unmanageable in the winter. If the water in their feet, and you know, you're using heated waters, which you see hanging there on the doors, they're they're heated, so they're the standard water. Uh, they're a little different. Instead of the tube with the little ball uh, that they'll they touch the ball and it it drips water they can feed off of like a little hand, you know, the same kind of you use for hamsters and whatnot. Um, these have got a little, uh, a little like piece of metal that sticks out. And when they touch the, touch the little piece of metal and it, it, it's under string, spring pressure and water pressure holding the seal closed. But um, it's, uh, the seal there is very temperamental. If, uh, you're doing anything you do if you're feeding them and you're watering them and you get any kind of little bits of like uh hay or material in the water it uh it ends up in the water and then ends up uh stuck in that nipple and you'll see you know where we've got little ice built up here that's because it drips just after they after they drink a little bit you get one or two drops well you know in the the other types of cage setups, that drop ends up down on the pan and those drops freeze and build up and eventually you can't remove the pan and you think to yourself, well, I'm gonna I'll wait until we get a little warm spell and then I'll clean the cages out and that doesn't happen. And before you know it, your cages are all frozen in and stuck and you can't do anything and you end up having this big like poo mat build up. So we're done having rabbits inside. They're outside now. I've raised meat rabbits in the past. These, uh, these aren't those rabbits. So we, uh, we were looking for satins. I was going to raise satins. I wanted to, uh, um, satins on the small end. I was trying to find New Zealand, uh, whites or New Zealand reds. Um, but I found this lady on Craigslist. She uh, said she had satins. I bought them. They were bunnies. They were tiny. Well, they were Polish. <laughs> and if you know the difference between a Polish, well, they're Polish crosses. But these rabbits are uh, 
the little that little black one there is mom and if you see the height of her ears she's just a tiny tiny little thing she looks like a little easter bunny little baby easter uh easter bunny so you know she's got these tiny little nubby ears and she ended up turning in you know the, the rabbits ended up turning into pets and the kids love them and we ended up breeding we breed them we sell them um it's not the uh, <laughs> it's not the meat they're not the meat producers i was hoping this round of would be so eventually uh, here in the spring we're getting this all set up we've got them for the time being but we're going to be getting rid of them and getting proper meat rabbits so in the meantime this is the uh this is the cage setup that i'm working so like i said we're up in alaska and the shipping is is incredible i was looking at uh looking to see if there was any options through kw cages which are the 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 ones that we have in the shed that have the pans that get stuck when they're outside um, or when the the water freezes but i was looking for an outside drop through option i came up with uh with a selection of cages that i wanted it's like four hundred dollars five hundred dollars for cages and i went to go check out and uh, it was another five hundred dollars in shipping so obviously that wasn't going to happen so this is where we're at right now we're going this route um it's all two by four and two by three construction um i've seen similar designs to this on craigslist that use four by fours in the corners i elected not to because where you do end up where you do benefit from the structure of having four by fours in the corners you end up with a complicated stapling area because obviously this the the wire has to staple to something and you end up having to brace around the four by four so what i elected here this is a nine foot by 30 foot i'm sorry nine foot by 30 inch deep um rectangle it's got two by fours vertically on the edges and then two by fours laying uh flat horizontally oriented 30 inches in on on uh 30 inches in from both sides there is a two by four laying horizontal i laid that out on the ground and i wired or i stapled the uh the wire to that so i ended up with one flat nine foot by 30 inch deep rectangle with, with wire on it with the two uh transverse um supports uh, then i moved to the ends here um i don't remember exactly what i came up with but i believe um there you got 24 inches up to the bottom of the cage there's uh you know it's three and a half here and then i believe this was like 24 and this was 18 for height but we've got the the pressure treated ground contact two by fours uh for the corner uh, for the corners as well as 30 inches in and then the top um is the uh nine foot it's a it's a nine foot six i'm sorry ten foot um 10 foot two by four nailed to the top of the front and a 10 foot two by four nailed to the back. Um, so what this allowed me to do was have a six inch overhang on both ends and use either a two, 10 foot piece of two by four or a 10 foot piece of um, uh, plywood on the top. Ideally, if I would have built this on something that was level that was flat like a shop floor i would have been in a position to uh to use a really you know to efficiently be able to use a 10 foot piece of plywood uh that would be cut uh you know it wouldn't even have to be cut rather it would be 10 foot by four foot top that's what it was originally measured to unfortunately i built this in on the driveway where it's super unlevel uh, so there's a lot of small little compensations uh, that I did to make up for that because I wasn't working on a level surface. Uh, I wasn't able to level the platform initially. The legs are all a little canted here and there, which means the top is a little crooked. Um, and I, I wasn't too worried about it. It looks straight to the eye. The, there, there is, 
you know, there is a little bit of a tweak on the door and that's just micro adjustments of the hinges can work those sorts of things out. But to the eye, it looks straight. Um, and anyone, if you've ever built a shop or a shed, you know, uh, as you uh, have those small deviations in your calculations as you move up, uh, things become a little bit more askew. And where that expresses itself most is when you put the roof on. Everything ends up fucked up. You end up with like a huge hangover or it doesn't quite line up. Or um, So I, I've, I've run into that. I've made small micro corrections uh, when I laid the roof down, uh, but ultimately what I was uh, forced to do was put a seam here on the roof to make up for that. And so I've got a four inch overhang, or rather a three inch overhang, all the way down instead of like, you know, three and then three and an eighth and three and a quarter and then three and three quarter and then four inches and it looks the roof ends up looking really crooked as you work down. So. That's where I ended up. It's not the end of the world. My doors are made out of two by threes. Um, that's not a good uh, side to show. I've got a little bit of I've got a little bit of uh, water freezing in the door here. That's why this door isn't closing because it's it's bumping into uh, that little bit of ice. But this is a good one. This is where the buck's at. So this is a little Polish buck in here. He's got his little nest. So this is the inside of what the cages look like. Um, 30 inches wide, uh, or 30 inches deep. It's uh, just under that wide. This is the narrowest of the uh, cages, but only by a little bit. Uh, but two by three doors, The uh, they're cut at a 45. These are five by five brackets that I, um, that I purchased at Home Depot. Uh, similarly, they're small little hinges. The, the feeders so. are probably, you know, this is going to sound silly, but they're probably the most nerve-wracking part of uh, putting this together because quite a bit of work goes into putting this door, each door together. You know, you make all your cuts and, you know, you get thinking, you're listening to music, you're chilling out and cutting stuff and you always end up making mistakes here and there. So by the time you get everything cut, everything screwed together, it's all lined up. It's not perfect, but it's close. Um, I put these little brackets on the inside to hold the door, uh, the hinge side, um, together. And that, similarly over here, there's a little bracket holding the hinge side together. You get all that done and then you got to cut your space out for the door. So these or for the feeders. These feeders are really nice that you can get them at any little, any feed store, um, that sells stuff for rabbits. And Ada is, uh looking under looking up at the rabbits um but they're really nice you you fill them from the outside but you have to make a cut on the door so you get the door all put together and then you got to start cutting wire um i didn't make a mistake but obviously i uh am open and own all my mistakes so this is that was my possible point of failure i managed to uh escape without any without having to rebuild the door but feeders are in waters like i said this is a little thing and you can see after they take a little take a little drink you get droplets of water that freeze um it's not that big of a deal when you're outside because it can just go down but when you're inside of an unheated shed um or you're you're it's dropping into those pans it gets to be a real mess Ada, get out of here leave the rabbits alone but that's it. And then I've just got simple latches. Uh, they're tight now because, you know, I, when I put, when I constructed it, I wanted the, the uh, latches to be as tight as I could reasonably get them, knowing that they're going to, everything's going to loosen up. And I didn't want the door to become too loose that when they start having babies, the, when we breed the polish, I think we're going to breed them, breed the, the dough one more time the mom one more time and get some more babies uh we sell them we don't sell them for much it's more uh the kids enjoy having the baby bunnies around well that's the rabbit cage i've got one more section i've got to put together i've got to do the doors and get the uh, piece of plywood on and then after that i'm going to uh going to uh lay 
a roll of asphalt on the top. Um, that's uh, that's the plan there. Pigs are all happy. Since the move, they're doing good. Seem to be getting along. Huh? Hanging out in the house eating the hay. I'll chuck them another bale today. But they're doing good. All right, let's finish our little trip around the world here. So we've got the birds are over on this side. We got the rabbit. Um, we got the rabbits, so we've got kind of a loop here. So you can see that the garden is centrally located. You got pigs that winter on the other side of the garden. The rabbits are over here. We've got turkeys in a building right over there. Chickens are on this side. So we're on kind of faced the side facing the river. This is where the chickens live. This is the uh, the old lady. This is the retirement home right now. <laughs> These girls are, have been with us for uh, a while now. They're six years old, six year old hens. We're getting one egg a day out of them. <laughs> so it uh, ends up being a pig egg. Um, but yeah, this is the retirement home. Uh, they don't eat much, they've earned it. They're uh, just hanging out, enjoying the winter in their little enclosure so when we got this place it came with this little building and uh the building is just a little um you know the the uh the line the side of it was right here with just a little slant roof um, eventually i do want to extend so i made my little addition to it and put this run in here we've got a really bad problem with uh, with predators, hawks and eagles, you get <laughs> as soon as the winter winter starts setting in, uh, any kind of free range bird here just ends up becoming sky captain, sky co, co pilot to a bald eagle. <laughs> bald eagles, hawks uh, descend from heaven, <laughs> grab your bird, and they're off. They're gone. It doesn't take uh, some of the eagles. They, you know, we get a lot of immature. Uh, bald eagles, uh, golden eagles, especially. I I haven't personally seen uh, any uh, mature bald eagles, you know, with a beautiful uh, white head, classic bald eagle. The immature bald eagles are a lot uh, more mixed, darker, brown, speckled uh, plumage. We've definitely had immature bald eagles and golden eagles in here getting our chickens, so. Everything gets a run. We've got uh, the chickens in here. You hear the turkeys going over there. But this is their setup. They've got this little little building. We've got two next nesting boxes. There's just five hens in here. Eventually they'll be swapped out for a younger generation, younger ladies. Um, you got two little nesting boxes. Show you the setup here. We've got two little nesting boxes and a uh, a wall hung feeder. Everything's just made out of um, two by fours. I use a lot of cedar, uh, just like cedar fence posts where I can. Uh, not fence posts, but fence planks uh, where I can just uh, keep everything fresh and nice smelling. Um, these are just stained pine fence planks. That I've constructed these little double doors. So we got one set of doors that go into the run. And they've got their little run. They've got access to uh, to snow right now, so the water is empty. Uh, but that's what it looks like in there. So they've got a little window, uh, covered enclosure. So they've got some area that doesn't have snow. Uh, they're they, they, the the hens are finicky. They do not like walking in snow ever. Uh, so if you just had a door here and the snow line came up to the door, they would never go outside. They just stay right there. They pluck. They don't want to get snow on their feet. I don't know if, it's a, if all chickens are like that or my Rhode Island Reds, but for as long as I've had Rhode Island Reds, half dozen years, they've not ever stepped foot outside unless they're being forced. So... 
Right next to it, we're putting a turkey. A, the turkeys are going nuts over there. But uh, right next to it, we're gonna put a, our turkey uh, house in with a similar run. So I think we're gonna do an eight foot, eight foot wide, six foot deep house enclosure. I've got the uh, blocks in the base ready to lay down here probably today. Uh, and we're gonna I'll put the enclosure on it. And then similarly, uh, I really like doing putting these runs together like this. Um, it's just pressure treated two by fours. Um, there's a, the one runner along the bottom, uh, ground contact, pressure treated. And then the wire is just overlapped and I use uh, rabbit cage clips to get the height that I need. And so you got one across the top or, you know, it strips across the top and then uh, overlapped and crimped together and then crimped together and stapled. But it's a good setup. I, I'm going to do something like that, something like that for the uh, turkeys as well. I've got some ideas of what that, what I want. Um, I want to, uh, I've got one tom and three hens i'm looking to uh get fertilized eggs from the hens and hatch them so we're going to have nesting boxes in here try to get this set up so that they're happy and uh i like the uh the the open top run i want them to have access to snow during the winter all right, well, thanks for watching my videos. I will keep you updated as I work on the turkey pen and finish the rabbit cage.